Welcome to my Bermuda on a Budget series. In this series, we are going to talk about how you can take your struggling Bermuda lawn and turn it into a showpiece on a budget. So, it is the end of October right now and my zoysia lawn is hanging on for dear life. Um, just got done cleaning it up earlier today and the leaves are already falling again. It's an ongoing process. But anyway, I started this series in the fall for a reason and it's because it's really the first step to your lawn for next year. And we're gonna go over to my buddy's house um, and look at what's going on and talk about what we can do right now in the fall. Here's what you can expect to see in this Bermuda series. You will see how we use pre-emergent and post-emergent weed control. We'll talk about why we do it. We're gonna talk about soil testing in the winter time and how we can amend it. We're also gonna to put together a fertility plan for next year. And we're also gonna work on good cultural practices like mowing, mowing frequency, mowing height, watering practices. If you have not subscribed to my channel and you want to see more Bermuda and or zoysia, make sure you click the button below. Now, one thing I do want to talk about is any of the products I use, I will link into the uh, description of the video. I am an affiliate marketer, which means if you buy something from that link, I'll get a small commission for it. So don't feel obligated to use that link. It is there. Um, you use whatever works best for you. Um, we're not going to go really in depth with a lot of products except for our herbicides and um, I think that's really about it. We're going to talk about a soil test kit that I recommend that you can get your hands on pretty easily. Anyway, let's um, head over to Antoine's house and check out what he has. We're over here at Antoine's house and we are working on this project where we're going to bring back his Bermuda lawn. And to be honest with you, he's already got a really good start on it and um, it looks pretty good. We just got a lot of weed pressure to deal with. Um, tell me a little bit about what's going on out here and what we're working with. Um, what I got going on, uh, I started from the beginning. I went and rented a power rake from Best Rentals. And I came out here and I just tore the whole yard up, front and back, everything I could. After I did that, went back with an actual walk behind spreader and I put out coming Bermuda seeds. And um, went out and put that out the uh, best way I could. And I put um, fertilizer with it too also. I had bought from the nursery and everything. And then I went and put hay on top of it because we were getting the rain right behind it so the, the hay would hold it. And end up, I got Bermuda to grow out in some spots, but I still got a whole lot of crab grass just popping up here and there. And this is like basically my first time because I'm a first time homeowner. So this is my first time actually doing the grass thing and I'm wanting to learn and know what I need to put out and what I don't need to put out and when I need to put it out. So I got my buddy Paul here working with me, training me, showing me what I need to do. Um, and I'm hoping I get that pretty dark green golf course looking grass um, at the end after everything is done. Cause I mean, I I love my yard. I'm an outside person. I, I want that pretty yard. So when everybody ride by, they can see the difference between my yard and the next neighbor's yard and the next neighbor. They're like, oh yeah. <laughs> he, he doing something good over there his yard for his yard to look like that. Yep. But um, like I said, I'm working with my man. He's going to show me all the ropes, in and outs, and we'll see how it turned out at the end. So the Bermuda seed was last spring, right? A year yep. and a half ago? Yep. Roughly? Yep. Okay. And we're going to walk through the yard and check out the weed pressure and um, see where his Bermuda is. Um, we just shot the footage on the pre-emergent. And I'm going to have to go back and edit that because we had no audio on it. So, but um, what are your long-term goals on, well, I guess you already told me. You want, you want that golf course look and 
that dark green color that yep. stands out yep. above all your neighbors. Yes, okay. sir. That pretty dark green. Like I said, then when they ride by and you look at the neighbor's yard, you can see that different line going beside you. are like, yeah, he got something totally different from what everybody else got. That's that's what I'm looking forward to. All right. So, as you know, we have to do it in stages. Um, we're going to make an assessment today and kind of formulate a plan on what we can do right now. It is fall. It's October. Um, we're starting to get into that dormancy window and we're going to find out what we can do right now going into winter to begin the process for next year. So let's go take a look at the yard real quick. Got a pretty good clean canvas here. This is what the um, Bermuda looks like in October in North Carolina. A lot of brown, a little bit of green on top, but mostly brown. But let's take a look at the weed pressure we got going on. So, oh, here we go. A lot of crabgrass throughout the lawn, and I see a lot of um, a lot of Bermuda, but a lot of that brown woody stem, and we can fix that pretty easy. One other thing that I see out here is going to be large areas of bahia grass, and I don't think you're going to be able to see it on here, but it's in here. Where's it at? Here we go. Here's some. So all of that is, is bahia grass, that leaf right there on top. And I dug some up the other day to take a look at it. Here's some seed heads from it. So we know of two things we need to take care of. And then we come over to another large part of the yard and we see lots of broadleaf, clover, what appears to be spurge maybe thinking that spurge or lespedeza here's another shot all right so we got our work cut out for us he is on an acre and we're going to try to control it the best we can and clean this yard up We're going to mix up the prodiamine, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And we have decided that we're going to go with about 0.46 ounces per thousand square feet. we got a 12-gallon tank, so we figured five and a half ounces was going to be close enough. you got to zero out the weight of your container. Zeroed out. Prodiamine. I'll show you where to get it. Five point five something. It's close enough. And that's all it takes to do twelve thousand square feet. In order to combat the weed problem, the broadleaf weeds in particular, we're gonna go with a three way herbicide. A three way herbicide, um, can be any herbicide that has three different active ingredients. The most common one is going to be something with 2,4-D, mecoprop, and dicamba in it. And the reason we would use a three-way herbicide is that it will have better efficacy on the treated weeds than any of these um, ingredients sprayed alone. Um, it also cuts the cost down a little bit. So what we have here is a half gallon, 64 ounces of a cheap brand. It costs $14.99. We've got enough here to do two applications on the areas that we need to treat. Anytime you apply a three-way herbicide, as with most other herbicides, you're gonna want to use a surfactant, um, like an 80% surfactant, non-ionic. And what that does well, first off, it's also called a spreader sticker, and the way it works is 
it breaks surface tension. So when you tank mix these together, when you spray your product out, it tends to coat the entire plant, the entire leaf, instead of wetting just one single drop wherever that droplet lands. This will coat the whole plant. Now, a three-way herbicide is absorbed foliarly, which means it soaks it in through the leaves. And this is the adjuvant that we use to help it along and coat more the surface of the plant. So we're gonna go with two ounces per thousand square feet on the three-way. Now that's what the label calls for. And I'm probably gonna go with about a half ounce to an ounce of surfactant per gallon of water in the tank mix. Now one other thing we can do to uh, make this three-way herbicide more effective is to add a kicker or add another component to it and there's a few things you can add but I'm gonna recommend carfentrazone because it's decently cheap and it makes the three-way herbicide work faster you can buy the carfentrazone and the three-way already mixed together in a product called speed zone and it will do the same thing this does I was told that acidifying the tank solution a little bit will help efficacy as well. Um, ammonium sulfate will help acidify this tank mix, but I don't have any. So I'm going with another source of nitrogen. Um, I don't remember what it is, but it is uh, the Peters Triple 20. And I'm going to add in a few cups to this tank mix. Maybe that little bit of nitrogen in it will help uh, the plant absorb the herbicide a little better or maybe it will help the tank mix acidify a little bit more that's where we stand let's go ahead and mix this up and get it put out and remember everything we're doing now is for results for next season all right so we're going to add in right at two ounces per gallon of the three-way herbicide now this is your broad leaf uh, herbicide All right, anytime you're tank mixing, we want to add one product at a time to the tank. So before we add our surfactant, we're going to go ahead and add the herbicide. You want to mix that up for just a second? All right, and we're going to add in a little surfactant, and we'll use uh, about five, let's go six ounces of that. That'll be a half ounce per gallon of water. I think that should suffice for now. And there's nothing dangerous about a surfactant, so you don't have to wear any gloves or anything when you're touching that. So we added our water first. We added our fertilizer, which is just a little bit to hopefully increase the efficacy of the herbicide. We mixed it up. We added our herbicide, mixed it, and then... We're going to go ahead and mix it again for the final time. Going down deep. Yeah, there you go. That ought to be good. Spraying different things, you need to keep in mind the nozzle type. This particular nozzle here puts out a, a finer mist than what we used on the uh, pre-emergent. The pre-emergent was a very large droplet because you wanted that to make contact with the soil. On this one here, you want it to make contact with the leaf blade. You don't want to wash it into the dirt. So this one here works by being absorbed by the leaf blade. All right, while he's wrapping that up, 
I'm just going to close real quick. We applied uh, somewhere around 0.46 ounces per thousand of prodiamine. We applied two ounces per thousand of the three-way herbicide. We've done an assessment of the yard and have determined that there is just as much or more crabgrass than there is Bermuda grass. We have yeast grass popping up everywhere. It's really thick and heavy. And we have Bahia grass. Um, all three of those we will tackle next year in the spring. But we also have a lot of we have a lot of broadleaf pressure um, on his property line at the ditch, which spans the entire length on one side and the width on one side of his yard. We applied the post-emergent herbicide today to knock the broadleaf out, or at least knock it back, make it look a little better, and decrease the chance that it will drop seed and, and grow healthier during the winter months. And um, give us a little bit of a head start going into winter so that we will have a head start on our next growing season. Stay tuned for an update video and an upcoming video on soil testing. See you next time.